for B, we will generate a unique ID for each one of those transactions to be able to identify them in the future. And this will be done by concatenating various fields. So this is going to get very complex very quickly, but I'm going to start by uh, using a simple match formula. I first need to explain what a match formula does. Then I'll show you what an index uh, formula does. We're going to then enhance each one of those, and then I'm going to put them all together once we get to the right answer. So I'm going to start with the erroneous, but for demonstration purposes, let's we'll start by looking for the largest, I'm sorry, the date of the largest transaction. So it's the date of the transaction with the largest operating margin, right? Which is, in this case, is the same as a profit margin, the same as your gross margin for now. All right, so what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for the search key that happens to be sitting right here on my H column, H2 specifically. Where am I gonna look for this uh, transaction or this value? I'm gonna look at a range that happens to be in my transactions table, specifically all the way from J1 down to J1000. Next, the next parameter says, what kind of search type do you have? Well, if you had, sorted all these values, we would be able to say, um, give me the search key in ascending order or descending order by using a one or a negative one. But since this information is unsorted and I want to find the exact match, then I'm going to use the zero value. And that's going to give me the exact value when the range is unsorted. Boom. So all this is giving me, right? all this is giving me is the very first match that I find with the amount 607 and 37 dollars out of that column are you with me so let me let me say that this could be found on row number 52 so if I go back to the transactions since I started on my very first row, and I don't always have to start with my first row. I could have started on row two, and then it would have given me row 51. And then I would have to translate that into an actual address. But in this case, I wanted to keep it simple. And I said, I'm going to look for the first instance of 60737, and then go back and give me a date. All right? All right. So let me go back to my customer summary. That's it. It basically finds the location within a range that I specify where I can match exactly the value of H2. Oh, wonderful, that's great. So I wanna copy this over and I am gonna anchor it so that I can copy it over. All this is gonna do is give me the location of that record. Boom, that's wonderful. All right, so normally what we do that for is to be able to look up a value that, that is matched if I wanted to search for a transaction that is looking for this index and then refer to something on the left, I cannot use a VLOOKUP value. So then that's why I'm going to have to use the index match combination. So for now, I'm going to use the index formula right here on the side. right? And I'm going to look at the reference. Right? What am I looking at? Well, I'm going to reference the date. I want to show the date. So my reference should be uh, a range of numbers. I'm going to keep it simple. So I'm going to go all the way to E1 to E100, right? And then I'm going to say, which row do you want to display? Well, I want to display the row that has the date that's shown right here on this formula, right? Because I already looked for the largest profit margin the very first one that I found that I could find. And then I said, all right, that's contained on, on row number 52. So go ahead and display that value, right? For row number 52 in column one. Notice that my index range is it's just showing one simple row. So I'm gonna keep it very, very simple, right? And just show what is the date value of those transactions. Woohoo. All right. That's done. And that's obviously a problem because I didn't anchor this. 
So let me just go ahead and anchor that before I, and then correct, correct the display. Now notice that in this assignment, I asked for transactions that occurred in 2018. So I already know I'm doing something wrong because I'm not showing transactions for the year 2018 only. Second, I am not asking or I'm not filtering um, the, I am not filtering the company. So it is possible based on this formula that I'm just looking at the first transaction saying, oh, grab it. But it doesn't show that it's actually being filtered by the customer. So because of that, I need to comp, you know, create a complex matching uh, formula. So are you ready for the next step? All right. Let me start by adding, hmm, how do we do this? Let's go ahead and add an additional layer, right? Instead of matching by just one exact field, why don't I just use the concatenate value where I can bring the string from A to, right? In this case, I'm going to match the value of A2 together with H2, which would be Alabama supplies, 607, 37, 18, 75 in a match evaluation, right? What am I matching it against? Well, I'm going to match it against the transactions uh, information, starting with row. Where are the names? Where the names happen to be, if I recall correctly, on the B column and the B column. So let's just make sure real quick, and then we'll fix the formula. There's an error, of course. But let me go back. So my names are all contained in the B column. So I want to match the contents of both the name and the operating margin with column B plus column J. And how am I going to do that? Well, I just Put them together in this little concatenation formula first, and then these have to be not separated by comma, but united by an and sign. Right. So by uniting those with the and sign and keeping the zero, meaning I want an exact match, I'm going to get, I should be able to get the result of uh, both the transactions on B1 and the transactions on J2. J1000. Let me make sure I got this correctly. It looks like I did it correctly. So um, do I need to close an additional match? Oh, yeah, we have a problem. Anytime that we use uh, an actual matching that, that, that uses more than one field, I have to add what we call an array formula. I got to tell Excel or Google Sheets that there's a, an array formula. So I, I'm going to have to put an envelope or um, surround this with the array formula. And that's basically just telling Excel and, and or Google Sheets, hey, I'm using more than one, uh, I'm using more than one value uh, in an array. And then that will make it work. Okay. Perfect. So let me just copy paste everything down, and now you see that these that this these values changed. Let me go back. Um, this happened to be an A918. Well, let's look at line number 78 just to see what happened before where we, where we were at before. So this line item for 78 does happen to be a right one. All right. Let's keep looking for. Um, well, actually, let me show you um, what the name of, why not? Just to prove a point real quick. So the transactions will be from B1 to B1000 based on that. All right, so this is on Alabama supplies. Um, see, you see that the second transaction already belonged to Spy Internet. This one belonged to WeMove. This one belonged to Alabama supplies. So obviously there was a problem. But now that I corrected this with the array, Right, I can then copy and paste the new formula with the array, and that should be able to let me know 
if the vendor matches and it should this should be equal to And then I can see that all of them are equal, right? That the actual name of the company or the customer that is containing that transaction matches the name on the left. So my formula is correct. All right. So now I know that the formula is correct. But I still have another problem. The problem is that I have a date right here that is not being filtered out. I should only have transactions not only from the same customer, but also from the year 2018. And mind you, as soon as I find a transaction, if I had a transaction that was for this customer, right, on in 2018, and if I had more than one transaction that year, unfortunately, I'm, I'm just going to give you the date of the first one that occurred. All right. So because of that, let me go in and see how we can further restrict the matching to only contain the year 2018. So I had to kind of brush up on my skills before I made this video. And I've decided to do it in a very simple way by displaying a text field of the year 2018, right? And the way I can do that is I can evaluate the company name, right? the amount that I'm looking for, and then the year 2018 on this side, and I can match the date on this end in a year format, and that should be able to help me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of copy this. Let me copy this again, and then I'm gonna modify it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to E1, E1000. So what this would do is grab in the date. But I am just going to make it simple, and I'm going to convert this date into a text field, right? And that text field should be shown in a year, year, year format, right? So the text formula grabs any date and then converts it in, or grabs any numeric number. In this case, remember that dates are numeric. And I am going to display the year format of any date. So I'm going to grab the date see if it matches the year 2018 and if it does then it will match the value so now i have three layers of three matching layers i have the name i have the amount for the largest profit margin and it has to be in 2018. that's another quick way of filtering that right? um, based on that i can say let me close this keep the rest of it and I still have 52, right? And I can now copy and paste those formulas. Now see over here, all of these transactions are 2018, all right? So this is now the date. First, I did the match within an array formula, and then I did the index, which will basically display the date of the transaction that occurred in row number 52. So now I just have to pretty much combine these two together into one field, right? I'm gonna be a little lazy. I'm gonna say, all right, well, let me grab this formula and I'm gonna prefix it with this. And instead of having I2 in there, right? I'm gonna have the contents of my array formula and I'm gonna end up with saying, this is, this is it. So I'm basically saying, go ahead and grab, give me the value, right? of of the date that is contained in the range of e1 to e1000 that matches the following set of criteria and what was our match well that was the the name has to be alabama supplies the amount has to be equal to the one in h2 in this case the largest profit margin of 60737 and then the year has to match um the year format of 2018 that is contained in that particular um, column. And the one represents basically 
which column are we displaying within this range? Well, this is a, 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 a simple, um, um, it's a simple set of columns. In fact, I, I could not display that, but in this case, I am displaying it. I'm going to go ahead and format this no longer as a as a number, but I'm going to just show this as a as a um, as a year. And let me do that one at a time, just so you can see. Like this was going to be four eight twenty eighteen, and now it's four eight twenty eighteen, a nine eighteen, a nine eighteen. So I'm just copy pasting. Now I can paste them all with the format. And then, of course, this is no longer relevant. So I can delete this completely. And this should be the date of the transaction with the largest profit or, or operating margin, right? Or just hey, make sure that I put this operating margin right there so it's not confusing, right? And so that's it. This is the date of the transaction with the largest operating margin for this customer in 2018 at least the very list, the very first one. If these were all sorted on, if the transactions were sorted on on a date order, then it would give me the very first one. But these are all in this array, so it's possible that you may get different dates because everybody gets a random number of dates. All right, this is it. It was very complex, but you see that it can be very simple at the end, the use of index and match. If you have any questions, of course, um, make sure you Reach out to me. Thank you.